Biden addresses AI risks and possibilities. AI markets expected to grow at crazy rates and more than 15,000 people already want an AI girlfriend. You are watching the AI report, the fastest, most relevant AI news delivered straight to your brain every day, figuring out this entire AI mess together. Let's get into it. This thing killed me. I've been laughing my guts off for like 20 minutes. If I play the sound here, I'll probably end up on an FBI watch list, so I won't do it. Basically, it's an endless debate between AI-generated avatars of Trump and Biden on Twitch that also goes off of Twitch comments. And you know how vicious Twitch comments can get, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Let's just say it's NSFW content. You've been warned. And speaking of Biden, he's kind of at the center of today's AI news. The president convened a group of AI and tech leaders in San Francisco to debate the risks and promises of artificial intelligence. This is the official remark posted on the website of the White House. Seems like this is verbatim, they didn't even clean it up. It's literally the way Biden speaks. Basically, it's pretty cookie cutter stuff. AI is on our radar, there's a lot of opportunity, there's also a lot of risk, we need to regulate it, yada yada yada. Pretty much what everybody alive is thinking and saying. Still, it's good to know that politicians are paying at least some attention. Biden also mentions the AI Bill of Rights for building protection systems and AI systems and an executive order he signed earlier this year to eliminate bias from AI. I don't know. I love taking shots at governments and politicians, but I actually think this administration is handling this thing somewhat properly, maybe. They are a bit slow, of course, but that's just how governments work by default. And also, you have to be careful here, we might be at a point where no move is better than a bad move. And of course, pretty much nobody knows exactly what's going on with AI. And even the smartest people in the world don't know what's gonna happen. So there's not much it can be done in the face of this much uncertainty, I guess. The brief ends with reporters asking Biden questions about his son. Ooh boy, has Hunter gone on another bench? Has he been a bad boy again? But that's not a point. These last few lines, the questions from the reporters, may be the biggest indicator of our society's downfall. Look at the questions from the reporters. Mr. President, have you spoken to your son today? Have you spoken to Hunter today? Mr. President, any reaction to his guilty plea? Have you spoken to your son, Mr. President? Okay, so, we're basically standing at what can be the most important crossroads for our entire species. We may figure out all the secrets of the universe. We are embodying God, creating something that's absolutely perfect potentially. Or we are staring our own extinction in the face. And the most powerful man, at least by some measures, is there to talk about that exact topic. And all these reporters want is cannon fodder for the yellow page gossip tabloids. And I don't even blame the reporters. They're just giving the people what they want which turns out to be some cheap drama and distraction. That's what scares me the most about AI. The fact that the majority of people aren't even paying attention to it. The average person out there doesn't even stand a chance in the age of AI. Luckily, that's not you and me, at least not entirely. We are paying at least some attention to this whole AI thing, learning, creating hopefully, so yay for us, I guess. Okay, in other politics news, Europe is making moves towards AI regulation as well. The negotiations on the AI Act start today, and they should end in November this year. Man, that's kinda slow. But again, I'm not sure if this can be done quicker. These things take time. I mean, okay, maybe there are some corrupt or inefficient parts of the EU parliament that slow things down, but mostly, I just think these sorts of regulations can't be done quickly, really. Let's hope they get this right and get it right in time. While we're in Europe, the EU wants to forbid companies from making sensitive hardware in China and other autocratic countries, especially hardware related to AI, but also quantum computing, advanced semiconductors, supercomputers, etc. The official document doesn't specifically mention China, but we all get the message. And it's not just China, it's also Russia and probably a few other countries as well. The EU's foreign affairs chief, Joseph Borrell, says we are not in a confrontational mood with China, which is diplomatic talk for we kind of are in a confrontational mood with China. 
The problem that the EU and the US have is that China always copies technology and uses it to advance its own economy without paying the price for having a liberal system that encourages innovation, but also it's very costly to maintain. Freedom of speech isn't free or easy to manage, as we can see. I don't want this channel to be about geopolitics, but some of it is inevitable when it comes to AI. I don't know what your worldview is, but personally, I don't like communist regimes. And even though Western capitalist semi-democracies have tons and tons of flaws, they're still infinitely better. So yeah, I kind of hate on everything. I don't really like anything, but I like the Chinese communist autocratic surveillance powered entrepreneur killing regime the least. And one more piece in Europe, the last one, I promise. German tabloid Bild, which is the biggest newspaper in Europe, will replace hundreds of editorial jobs with AI. The newspaper would, quote, unfortunately be parting ways with colleagues who have tasks that in the digital world are performed by AI and or automated processes. Ugh. I hate when big corporations use polite language while stabbing you in the back. But, I mean, you're tabloid editors. You're essentially Satan's right-hand men. I'm kidding. People losing jobs is not to be taken lightly. Hope the people laid off land on their feet, but I fear we will be seeing a lot more reports like this in the near future. Okay, let's move on to tech. Robots will very soon become a thing. That's my prognosis. Google's DeepMind RoboCat, which is definitely not a robotic cat, sorry to disappoint you, is a robotic agent that can learn how to operate different robotic arms. It can learn really quickly just from a few hundred demos and it can improve itself with self-generated data. Why is this important? Well, up until now, robots were mostly good at doing one specific task, like maybe assembling cars in a car factory. Robocat will enable robots to learn how to do a lot of things and improve how they do them over time. Basically what I would want to be when I grow up. Okay, time to ring the Terminator alarm, I guess. More tech-related news, Chinese scientists turn to artificial intelligence as potential one kilometer seam of rare earth minerals found in Himalayas. So, Chinese geologists discover a potential reserve of rare earth minerals in the Himalayas that could significantly strengthen China's position as the leading global supplier. Aren't they already the leading global supplier? Hmm. That's strange. They use a machine that has 90% accuracy in locating seams like this. And of course, there's some drama here. The minerals are located along the border of Tibet, where China and India have an old unsolved beef. Anyway, the AI is hunting for a unique, lighter form of granite, which often indicates the presence of rare minerals such as lithium. And as you may know, lithium is the key material in batteries, and the world will need a lot more of it in the coming years. Okay, interesting development. However, the AI learning mineral hunting machine isn't exactly there yet. The scientists don't trust it completely, so let's see what happens. Moving on to finance. FinGPT, the first open source financial large language model, is here. FinGPT aims to democratize internet scale financial data, providing researchers and practitioners with accessible resources to develop Fin LLMs and build the future of finance, which is open according to the creators. So there's now one more way for you to lose all of your money on the internet. Look, the reason why I'm skeptical of AI and finance is because I'm generally skeptical of the whole finance game. It's essentially a zero sum game. For someone to win, someone else must lose. Not sure what will happen when you give some AI to everyone in that game. Maybe the winners and the losers switch at times, but essentially the rules of the game are the same, which is why I prefer building and creating stuff. Still, this may turn out to be a cool thing, so yeah, shout out to FinGPT. Other finance news, artificial intelligence is beating the professional stock pickers. Yeah, that's because everything beats professional stock pickers. I mean, have you ever seen Jim Cramer? Google dart throwing monkey stock picking strategy and you'll see what I mean. Look, again, I'm not a finance guy, but I don't see much good coming from this whole AI and finance ordeal. As far as mere mortals are concerned, we're all subject to the efficient market hypothesis. Sure, if you have some sources of information that nobody else has, usually you're a billionaire already, and this may not apply to you. You may be above the efficient market hypothesis. But if you're just a guy with a laptop trying to solve the market with AI, 
and I'm talking consistently make good living out of it over years, not just have like three lucky weeks, then good luck to you. Let me know if you succeed, by the way, I might have some questions for you, but I think the odds are overwhelmingly against you. The AI market size is expected to grow up to 125 billion by 2027, a report by Technavio finds. Hmm, sounds kind of low. I guess it depends on how you define the AI market, but I think even now it's estimated to be around 100 billion. And I've seen studies that suggest that number to go around two or three trillion dollars in the next few years. I may be missing something here, but this sounds very low. Another AI market report, this one is a bit more specific, it's about AI sensors. In 2022, this market was estimated to be worth around 3 billion, and it's expected to grow to 50 billion by 2032. That's a nice growth curve, but I think even this estimate may be low. We just saw how quickly robotics are advancing. If robots become a thing in the next decade, which they probably will, they will need a lot of sensors a lot more than $50 billion worth of sensors. Let's talk again in 2033 and see if I was right. OpenAI may launch an app store for AI models and custom AI chatbots. In this store, companies could buy and sell bots custom tailored to their specific needs. Currently, Salesforce and Microsoft have similar stores. And since OpenAI was kind of adopted by Microsoft, it would probably look bad if they compete with their new daddy now. The option is on the table, but it may not be materialized. And finally, let's wrap things up with something that scares the living bejesus out of me and I hope and pray it doesn't become part of our reality and make our struggling world even worse. But also at the same time, I'm 100% sure it will definitely happen and that's AI virtual girlfriends. Over 15,000 people are already on a waiting list to chat with Karen AI. An AI startup teamed up with Karen Marjorie, I guess I'm supposed to know who that is, but I kind of don't. And they're developing Virtual Girlfriend. This isn't exactly new, but the waitlist part is recent, I believe. <sighs> Guys, come on. Notice the intro and outro of the AI report of this segment. It's a simple but powerful and optimistic call. Stay human. You're doing the exact opposite here. I know it's tough out there. The dating scene is absurd, but you gotta hang in there. Hit the gym, make some money, learn some game, or at least do some old-fashioned, you know, solo activities. Come on, a virtual AI girlfriend? That's like throwing the towel, and the AI revolution has barely started. Ah, AI will not make the world a simpler place. And that's the way it is. That was the AI report for today, brought to you by yours truly entirely. I've been a busy bee here on this channel, doing all the researching, writing, shooting, publishing, editing, making sure we're staying ahead of this entire AMS. No days off, no weekends, no sick days, no holidays, just one guy and AI news for you. So if that sounds useful to you, hit the like and subscribe button for more AI news and AI truth and a little bit of AI sarcasm and I will see you tomorrow.